Getting great audio for your video content can be difficult. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to go a little behind the scenes with this mobile rig and show you my shotgun setup and audio gear on all of the videos I use here on the Riverside channel. All right, a little different view on this side of the desk, but going to flip the camera around and walk you through the setup. So here's the desk where I record all the video content for the Riverside channel. And this is the microphone I use every time. This is the Sennheiser MKH 416. It's an industry standard microphone. It is about $1,000, but if you want to buy one microphone and never think about it again, this is the microphone to get. There are some more inexpensive options like the MKE 600 for about $400, and I'll link those in the video description. This shotgun microphone is attached to a boom arm, one that you would normally use for like a podcast, but this makes it easy to just put this microphone exactly where I want it. It's easy to position and it stays where I put it, and I can put it out of the way when I need. That XLR cable is running down the arm and underneath the desk, and it used to be going to this audio interface. This is the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3, and I was using this for a long time, sounded great, but now I actually have this microphone running down under the table and going directly into this Rodecaster Pro 2, and as you can see, it's getting audio right now, and that thing is just always on, so it's ready to record. That Rodecaster Pro 2 is going directly into this Mac Studio, and I record the audio separately for each one of my videos. I could run a cable from the Rodecaster Pro 2 directly to my camera, and this way the audio that the camera is recording is from that shotgun microphone, but I actually prefer to record it separately. I just like knowing that that audio is being recorded locally to my Mac. I can monitor it in Audio Hijack, and I could just glance at my menu bar whenever I'm recording, and as long as those sound bars are moving, I know my audio is being captured. Now what's just as important as the microphone that you're using is the sound environment of the room you're recording in. As you can see here, these are all sound panels. This entire back wall is covered in this 12 inch by 12 inch sound paneling floor to ceiling. And that's a big deal. That helps reduce a lot of the echo and reverb in this room. I'll put a link to these sound panels in the show notes. But if you don't want to cover an entire wall, you can use sound panels like this one. This one I got from Sweetwater. I'll link this in the video description as well. And I have three of these sound panels, one here on this wall, and I have two on this wall, just to make sure that every wall has acoustic paneling. Now, if you have a window like I have here, you definitely want to put a shade in front of it. This is a blackout shade, so it eliminates most of the light coming into the room, and it does help prevent a little echo as well. Here on the back wall, I actually have three sound panels from GIK Acoustics, that's G-I-K, I'll put a link in the video description. And not only do these look cool on camera, but they are actually sound panels. I also have a sound panel on the ceiling, I'll put a link in the description for this as well. This is often called like a sound cloud or something like that, but you can mount it to the ceiling and I could mount multiple if I wanted to. Plus I also have this sound blanket from Audimute and this is on a swiveling arm. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. It does creak a little bit, but this sound blanket reduces any echo or harsh noises that might be reflecting off the door and just helps absorb some more of that reverb and echo. And finally, you have to think about the floor. Carpeted floors is ideal, but if you have hard floors like this one, then you definitely want to get a rug large enough where it covers most of the floor. This way it reduces even more of that echo and reverb. And you can even be uh, cool and get a Star Wars themed rug like I have here. And one last tip, when you're recording audio and you're in front of a computer monitor like this one, you might actually have sound reflecting off the monitor back into the microphone. So make sure to move these monitors as far back or away from you as possible. And that's a little behind the scenes of how I record pro audio for each of these videos on the Riverside channel. If you'd like to learn more about this little mobile rig that I was using to film my behind the scenes footage, you can check out this video above or in the description. And if you have any questions about audio, video, or setting up a new video podcast setup, leave a comment below this video. We'd love to answer you in the future. And you can also check out our new playlist on two minute tutorials. You can check it out right here where I explain the difference between dynamic and condenser microphones, how to reduce mouth sounds in your recordings, and a ton more. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.